Hey everybody, um, I came across a, a really good example in the discussion uh, about a hypothesis test and I wanted to share it with you guys and um, use it to help highlight exactly how hypothesis tests work. So, the basic concept of a hypothesis test is very simple. It's kind of a three-part process. Number one, you identify a problem. Somewhere in the world, something isn't working the way it should. We have some sort of problem and precisely it's a measurable problem. So for instance, in this case, they've identi identified the problem that this ABC company has 20% of their employees quit within the first year. Um, I did my thesis research on the fact that 50% um, of all teachers quit the profession within five years. That's um, It's a stat that's been there for decades and they've been trying to fight, you know, how do we combat that? So you can see how it's kind of a similar idea that 20% is a lot. It's really expensive. We don't want to keep hiring, um, you know, and, and retraining people. So we want to come up with ideas to lower that rate, okay? Here's a, another example where it talks about um, uh, manic episodes, right? So what are the possible effects of meditation exercise and less stimulation from external sources on mania? So now we've identified a different problem. We have um, a bunch of patients that suffer from mania and they have a certain number of manic episodes. Again, we'd want to give that a number. So we'd want to say the average number of manic episodes that an average patient suffers in a month is 10, right? Whatever it is. I don't know. Maybe it's higher than that. Maybe I'm way off. And so we've identified that problem and we've given it a numerical value, okay? So now, let's go back to the ABC company. Our problem is people leave at 20%. What's our solution? Well, our solution is we're going to hire this new training company to train our new employees better. And we're going to hope that that lowers, right, lowers the percentage of people who quit within a year. So problem, solution. So then what do we do? We apply that solution and we gather some data and we see if it had an effect. So the null hypothesis is going to be, even with this new company doing their new hiring process, nothing has changed. The, uh, the, the, the number of people that are going to quit, the proportion right, of people that are going to quit is still 20%. That's our null. Nothing has changed. It still equals 20%. The alternative hypothesis is going to be, and this is our claim, right? Our claim is basically our research question. Our research question is, I think better training is going to lower the percentage of people who quit. So my alternative hypothesis is going to be, with this new training in place, the percentage of people who quit is going to be less than 20. So we're basically testing on a proportion, right? This would be a one-tailed test, and it would be on proportion. We'd have P instead of mu for means, because we're looking at the proportion is normally 20%. Now we're going to have the P is less than 20%, the proportion, a big capital P. We're not talking about P like the P value, right? So we're doing proportions here is less than 20%. And then you would, you know, gather your data, and you would compute it. And if it ends up being significant, then you would say, hey, we can reject the null that nothing has changed in favor of supporting the alternative. And now the data seems to support my claim that this um, new training company's process is going to lower employee turnover rates. Okay, now let's go back to the other example with um, the mania patients. And we've identified the problem <clears throat> that they suffer X number of mania episodes in a month. Again, let's just pick a number, let's say it's 10. We've come up with a, a possible solution of, hey, we think if we um, show our patients how to meditate, how to exercise better, and how to control their environment and have less stimuli, that this is going to lower their number of manic episodes. So my research question is, will meditation, exercise, and controlling one's environment lead to fewer manic episodes on average? So my null hypothesis is going to be no change. My null hypothesis is going to be even if they do all this stuff, right? So even if pe if patients meditate, exercise, and control their environment, the, the mean number of manic episodes is still going to be 10 per month. So there's my, my idea of no change. The alternative hypothesis is going to be 
if patients meditate, exercise, and control their environment, the average number of manic episodes will go down, will be less than 10. All right, so again, we would have a one-tailed test. Again, it would be a left-tailed or a lower-tailed test because we're trying to see um, something go down. And then again, we would run the data, and if it came back significant, we could reject the null in favor of the alternative. We'd say, yay, our solution works. Okay, guys, so that's basically how hypothesis tests work. It's, it's kind of a simple three-step process. Step, step one is you identify a problem. Step two is you come up with a solution. Step three is your claim ends up, you know, your research question is your claim, and it ends up just being that your solution works. And then if you want to say step four is then create the hypotheses um, based on that, where the null is always that nothing changes, the alternative is always going to be your claim that you're trying to see if your solution actually has an effect. Then you run the data and see if it is, and you state your results. Okay, so setting up this hypothesis test is a simple, simple kind of three, four step process, right? And then you run it and get your results. And hopefully that will help you guys.